Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital checking in. Today is uh, Wednesday, January 10th. It's around 7.30 New York time. And tomorrow we'll be getting the highly anticipated December uh, CPI report. Uh, estimates are for a 0.2% increase month over month, which is expected to be hotter than last month, 0.1. X Energy, X Food and Energy, we're looking for 0.3 in line with last month. Uh, year over year, we're looking for 3.2 versus 3.1. X Food and Energy, we're looking for 3.8 versus 4.0. So I wanted to point out a couple of things with these numbers that are expected for tomorrow. The first thing that I thought was interesting regarding uh, tomorrow's numbers on the uh, core CPI is notice that the median estimate is for 3.8, and notice that the average is for 3.85. And that's a slight variation, and it's a slight little dis dis difference, but uh, in the world of the CPI, it couldn't make a difference between a number coming in at 3.8 or 3.9, because a 3.85 rounds up to 3.9. So that's something I think that's worth noting. And additionally, when you look at these numbers, the top four analysts here are 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, with only one at 3.7 and then a 3.8 and a 3.9. So there's a lot of 3.9 numbers in here in the first six rankings of analysts. Uh, and so I think this is an important little caveat that may prove uh, critical tomorrow. I, I don't know, obviously, but I thought it was worth pointing out. And then finally, when it comes to inflation swaps for the month over month reading are looking at 0 0.25, which would obviously round up to a 0 0.3 and would be hotter than what the expectation is for 0 0.2. Uh, and then of course when we look at the when we look at the year over year number that's expected to come in at 3.3, which would also be hotter than the median estimate of 3.2. So these are little minor details, but they may matter tomorrow when we get these reports because all of a sudden if you start getting a hotter month over month headline month uh, reading and a hotter year over year reading on headline and you get a hotter than expected core CPI reading on the year over year uh, that could be you know something that kind of changes market disposition just because again the, the broad expectation has been here the Fed is going to cut rates starting in March uh, there's not you're not seeing many odds for a rate cut in January but you have a 70% chance of a rate cut in March, and, and that's a pretty high odds. And we have a five point, the market's pricing in 5.7 rate cuts in 2024, which is basically six. The Fed is telling you maybe two or three. So there's a big divergence right now between the market and these little tents here and there can really make a difference. Um, they can also make a very big difference when it comes to the shape of the yield curve as well. Uh, Two-year treasury rates obviously could be impacted by this as well. Uh, you're seeing right now that momentum on the two-year treasury has uh, broken out to the upside. And we're also seeing you know, a hard reversal off of these lows that came at four and a quarter percent, which dates back to this level here in August, in April of, 20, of 2023, which really coincides more with that SVB period of time uh, and not so much with the stronger economic picture that we've seen over the last you know, nine months hence. Uh, the one thing here that I guess is worth pointing out is that when we look at the two-year rate and kind of get a sense for what's been happening here, uh, we can take a look and see that there is a, a, a downtrend that looks to have been broken here, uh, and that could potentially be telling us that rates on the front of the curve have a little bit higher to go. Maybe they look to move back up to 450. Maybe they're looking to move back up to 470 because you can see this big straight line drop in here. And these straight line drops tend to act like gaps at times. And, and so you, you get a number that's a little bit hotter than expected. Perhaps you get a, a move higher here back to this uh, this downtrend that's formed in the two year around this 4.5 to 4.6 region. We also have the 10 year rate, which is also showing some signs of consolidating and started to show some signs of potentially breaking out today after the 10 year treasury auction went off. That auction went fairly well. It had a little bit of a tail on it, but certainly nothing uh, that nothing that to be alarmed about. It was much stronger than what we've seen in the past. 
So that auction, I think, overall went well. But uh, the question, of course, will be what will the CPI report be tomorrow? And, of course, you can see on the RSI this big churn change in trend that's been starting to form here on the RSI. And you can see we're just barely we're, – we're sitting right now right at 50 on the RSI. And, a, and that's been sort of a level that's been – important for the 10 year now going back to some time at 50 it kind of defines where the momentum is and obviously when we broke 50 back here in november that really led to a big plunge in rates now we're back here trying to get above 50 does that lead to a big breakout in rates does that send the 10 year back towards this 435 region it's possible uh, uh certainly when we look at the 10 year minus the two year spread we have a, a similar sort of look here with what looks to be on a daily chart, um, a rising momentum indicator. This has been a big level of resistance right here uh, for the 10 minus two spread when we look at it more closely. Uh, here on the hourly chart, you can see that this has served as resistance a couple times. It looks like now we're consolidating with an uptrend, potentially a rising triangle. Are we gonna break higher? Is the 10 year, is the 10 two spread really gonna start moving up again? and potentially challenging these upper levels here uh, at negative 11 basis points. As we've pointed out in the past, this has been one of the longest inversions that we've had in a number of years, in, in many, many years. And here you can see that we're you know, approaching something like 600 days right now, 560 days that we've been completely inverted. Some of these other inversions have been back and forth, you know, where they've been much shorter lived. This is you know, one of the longest inversions that I can find you know, going back over the last 40 years years and even in the 1989-1990 inversion we kind of flip back and forth between positive and negative so it's coming like it's coming due where this thing is going to have to go and eventually return to something that looks somewhat normal and uh, you know if you get a move in, in rates tomorrow on the back of the curve that exceed that of the two year you could get that breakout and that push higher and that obviously if, if you're going to get higher rates and that can push the dollar up the dollar index right now has been struggling at this downtrend. Uh, you can see that we have multiple downtrends in the RSI, but overall it looks like momentum is trying to turn positive here because here's a low, here's two lower, here's two higher lows, here's a high, here's a higher high. It looks like this momentum is trying to shift and turn like a battleship uh, higher. And really what we need at this point is a break above this downtrend. If that can happen, you can probably start moving up towards 103 and a half maybe 104 and a half. Uh, and it certainly looks like when we start looking at things like the euro, the euro has also been, you know, showing some signs of potentially breaking down. Here's our long-term uptrend in the euro. That's been showing signs of momentum getting lost. Here's a downtrend that's forming. When we look at the euro more on a closer basis here, uh, we can see that uh, the, the euro has been struggling to get back above this 110 area. This is obviously our big level of uh, support here around 109 or so. And that's the level that really needs to be watched because if the euro can manage to get back above this 110 area, it has room to run to 111. But if you're going to get higher rates potentially in the U.S. tomorrow, if the number comes in as the market is sort of kind of hinting at, then perhaps you know you get a euro that breaks lower from here uh, and that would be uh, a key here because we need to watch this 108 and a half uh, level. When we look at the pound versus the dollar, um, overall you still have some of the similar characteristics of that of the um, of of the dollar index with this downtrend that's forming in the pound. We have uh, you know more notably we have this you've had this uptrend that's formed in the pound over the last couple of weeks. You know the question is 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 which way again. Are we going to break? If rates be between U.S. and sovereign bonds start to widen, that's going to mean that the dollar is going to strengthen, and that's going to lead to a higher, a weaker pound. You can see that we have this sort of rising triangle pattern forming. This is our big level of support around 128. So a break above 128 and a half or so obviously sends us back up towards 131. Likewise, a break of uh, this uptrend potentially sends us down towards uh, 125 and a quarter. Um, and then uh, finally, we'll just take a look at the US dollar versus Japanese yen. We had mentioned the other day that it might begin to move higher. The RSI continues to trend. We've broken this downtrend. We now have, we have a little bit of an uptrend that's starting to form here. Um, it's possible that uh, we continue to see this uh, move higher. We wanna see 
More importantly, if we can get above this 145, 146 level, that's really the critical level to break above because if we get above it, then that's going to set up a potential move back into this 147, 148 region. And it has a look of what the 10 year almost looks like with this uh, rising triangle pattern that's potentially forming here. So this 145 and three quarters levels is a big level to watch. Uh, anyway, I hope that helps. Good luck with the CPI report. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.